back with another episode after a little break. High Rocks Training Vlog episode 9. Hope you guys are still here with me. Uh, we're a week away from competition here, so I was doing a lot more conservative movements and just keeping my body ticking over, not doing anything too strenuous. Straight into the warm up. Um, start with some shoulder banded work and then my hip circles as per usual. Opening up your hips, getting ready for the workout ahead. Things that I've done before hamstring stretches, nothing you've not seen. And yeah, I'm feeling a bit nervous now, so the pressure's kind of ramping up. Um, I've been really proud though, April was really good. I was able to keep my diet to a good place and that really informed really good training sessions. I think this, the session before <clears throat> this one was the one where I pushed the most. And then I've got one more really strenuous session three days before the actual competition and then we're into it. But yeah, carrying on with the warm up, more hamstring work on my hips and then here we do some 90-90 hip rotations this is just to make space feel out the kinks see what's going on inside internally just make sure that nothing's kind of reacting weirdly before i get to do more advanced movements as the workout goes on Opening up our shoulders here, lying down in the frog pose, really turning it out, stretch your back. You're going, you're going to hear a lot of clips in this movement, but it feels good. Warming up my wrists as per usual. And yeah, just feeling my way into the session basically. Uh, walking it back. Uh, it's actually quite a good sign of flexibility if you can walk back while keeping your hands and toes on the ground. Straight into some upper body work. So I started with just some scapular pulls, warming up the, that side of things into toes to bar I did 10 reps or three sets of this and then I superseted that with some knee raises and some oblique uh, knee raises as well Hanging leg raises, I'm um, trying to get better form with these because you know there's a lot of swaying in my part so I need to engage my lats a bit more and remain static and then into the side oblique raises that I was talking about earlier. I then went from there into the chin ups which obviously target more of your biceps, a bit less of your lats than it would do as a pull up but I did 8 reps or 4 sets of that before going into the main circuit of that day's workout. Main circuit was four sets in total, uh, 40 seconds of work with 20 seconds rest. And it consisted of skipping, banded goblet squat, uh, set, weighted set up, and dumbbell clean and press. And obviously this is quite scalable. So if you wanted to take down the weight, you can. If you wanted to have 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest, you can. If you want to make it really tough, obviously go 50 seconds of work, 10 seconds rest, or for the ultimum, do one whole set and then rest for 20 and then go another set. So you can find what works for you. So for the weight to sit up here, I'm, it's a 10 kilogram uh, weight. And then for the clean and press here, that's 20. And for the banded goblet squat, it is 24 kilogram kettlebell. And my main advice for this is just like breath control. Anytime you're doing a circuit, you really want to uh, like focus on your breathing because that's what gets you the t most tired quicker a lot of people give up because they can't they're just not getting enough oxygen into their muscles and the breathing's not right before the actual working muscle itself has been fatigued so regardless of whether you're doing 30 seconds of work 20 seconds of work whatever it is breathing correctly and keeping that concentration through the movement is what's going to get help you get fitter and stronger as you move on because if you can't get that correct, you will always find yourself hitting a wall a lot sooner than your body actually is. Anyway, after that, into another little mini circuit. So ab roll out with some curtsy lunges and also press ups. So this one was kind of all at once. And then I did the 30 second rest and then all through the circuit again. And I finished up the third set with just doing some pistol squats because they're always fun. And I hadn't done them in a while and I was curious if I could get them. Form wasn't perfect, as you'll see, but I'm quite happy that, especially now, I've got them on both legs, where usually it used to be just my right leg only, that I could do pistol squats. Okay. 
So here are the pistols, you can notice that I've got better ankle flexibility in my left leg than I do my right. Because my right leg, the heel just comes up just a bit, like an inch off the ground as I go down lower to the position. But I've got enough strength to come back up, but that's just something to work on for future. Moving on, uh, this is the landmine press. So this is front deltoid, mainly off your shoulder working here. Keep your core stability, having, having the split stance leg kind of engages the core because you want to keep that balance of the rolling weight either side and then I went into more hanging knee raises this time with a lot more control I find this station works better for me to do hanging knee raises than hands above my head just slightly because of the pull in my lats um, so hopefully over time I can work to that but yeah that's the session this one was actually quite nice and quick um, was tough in the right places and I really felt it it was a good one and I'd implore people to try sessions like that in between your main training days just to keep your body ticking over and feeling good. I finished up with some um, medicine ball slams and a slight twist for your obliques as well and that's just a nice little finish up for your heart. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the episode, you know what to do below and I'll see you on the next one.